There are a lot of 3D modeling softwares out there, so it can be hard to know which one to use for our 3D printing projects. I've personally been on the hunt for a good solution, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys my first impressions on SketchUp and share my thoughts on who I think this program is right for. What's up guys, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Nate Hibbert. I'm a self-taught graphic designer for an e-commerce business that I started with my brother, but I love learning new skills. The current skill I'm working on is 3D printing. I'm doing this in hopes that I can take it from a personal interest and turn it into a profitable wing of our business. So I started this channel with the purpose to track my progress and hopefully help anyone out there who wants to learn from my mistakes. In my last video, I talked about my most recent mistake, which was spending too much time in a 3D modeling software that wasn't right for the types of models that I wanted to make. With SketchUp, I feel like I might be drawing my conclusions a little bit too early, uh, but I do want to show you my first impressions and thoughts and then start a conversation in the comments down below with anyone who is using SketchUp for 3D modeling uh, or 3D printing rather, as you guys might have a better case or you can show me the types of prints that you're making uh, so I can wrap my head around it a little bit more. But let's go ahead and jump into SketchUp. So this is the SketchUp website. When you come to their page, they're going to tell you all the great things that you can do with their tool. Uh, something that I wanted to point out, two things that jumped out to me, uh, is that this tool is no longer owned by Google, it's owned by this company up here, uh, Trimble, uh, which is I think how you pronounce that, and it, that doesn't really have any great significance, it's just some confusion that I had. Uh, people who pointed me towards this tool said that it was owned by Google, uh, and it did used to be owned by Google, was so that we're accurate, but they're no longer owned by Google. Uh, so again, I don't think that has any great significance, it was just a little bit of confusion for me, uh, wondering if I had the right program because I was looking for Google's SketchUp. So if you are looking for this uh, in future, just know that maybe it's not owned by the same company anymore, uh, but the name SketchUp is still around. And uh, the next kind of confusion thing that happened is uh, they've broken up this program into kind of three different uh, products. So let's go ahead and looking at their pricing uh, plans. And I'm gonna be using this for personal use. I'm assuming if you're a 3D printer, you'll probably be using this uh, for personal use as well. So let's go ahead and click on that and just look at the three different options they have here. So there is a free option. This is what I was able to use uh, and something that I, you know, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on. But there are two other uh, versions of this tool, I can say. And that, again, just caused a little bit of uh, confusion. So when I first went to sign up, I actually signed up for their shop uh, version of this tool. Uh, so it's a 30 day free trial. So I didn't actually have to pay anything. I didn't like get tricked to paying anything. Um, but it is just something to know that uh, there is a free version that's kind of hidden uh, behind the shop version because I'm sure this is what they want you to sign up for. Um, so just know that going in, make sure that you're looking for the free program. Uh, that way after the 30 day thing runs out, uh, you're not paying the subscription of any type. Um, uh, the other version of this tool that they have is the pro version. And this is actually uh, like more of a desktop app, which seems a lot more powerful uh, and has a lot of uh, ben benefits that they talk about down here in their uh, sales verbiage. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can definitely check that out. But for me and what we're doing here, uh, I think that the free version is uh, good enough for us to look at at least today. All right, jumping now into what the software actually looks like. Um, it looks kind of bland. They do put this person in here for size and perspective, um, but when you start looking around, you can realize that uh, it's just a wide open space. So, you know, that can either encourage you uh, that there's a lot that you can do with this blank space or kind of feel overwhelming of like not really know where to start, which is usually where, uh, you know, I land on that topic. Um, but they do have this built in little quick tutorial that you can look at, um, which is going to just walk you around all the basic areas so up here you can uh, you know do all your saving and your naming for the actual file management which is good uh, which we're going to talk about that in just a second on the left hand side here is kind of your toolbox for your basic tools that you're going to be needing for designing on the right hand side over here um, there's more of like dealing with uh, you know the components that you have in here and bringing in uh, new components and things like that which is good and then down here in the bottom uh, is kind of your undo redo help language like more of the uh, website side of things. And then over here on the right hand side, which is actually really important, uh, again, for the type of designing that I'm doing, uh, is your measurements. So you can actually put in uh, exact measurements, which is really good. So that's about all that you get right here inside of the website. Um, so we definitely uh, not as good as Tinkercad, I would say, for like introducing you to uh, modeling in a 3D space. But if you're a little bit more advanced than just starting out, um, and you kind of have a handle of how to model in a 3D space, this might not 
be so bad, um, just jumping straight into things. And actually through some clicking around in this help section down here, I did find that they have uh, some tutorials. These are just written out with screen caps, so it's not quite as, uh, again, hand-holdy as where it's going to show you right in the program. But you can click through here and there are kind of the basics of what you can do with this tool uh, and some of the uh, like keyboard shortcuts and stuff, which is really helpful. But heading back into the actual program itself, um, we can see in our toolbox, we have most of the basic tools over here. Um, so we can draw lines, we can fill in paint buckets, which is um, you know pretty good for doing actual like renders or things that might look a little bit more realistic. Uh, again, com comparing this to Tinkercad where uh, it's a lot more simplified and you're not really doing any like rendering of objects in that program. Uh, this one was kind of cool to see that you did have some different textures and things that you could add uh, to your layers that you're making. Not a thousand percent necessary for 3D printing, but just something cool that I found, uh, you know, that you can do in this software. Uh, besides that, your basic like extrudes are here. You're able to combine, uh, you know, shapes and things in different ways, which is always super helpful. Uh, and then actually measuring things out. Uh, I found there's quite a few tools for that, uh, which is good. And you can actually use dimensions, which uh, again is really crucial for the type of 3D printing that I'm doing, which is more like functional things around the house or desk. Uh, um, so, you know, I've really liked how much you can measure inside of this tool. So I'll just go ahead and quickly make a box that we can add some textures to uh, and show you what a little bit of the modeling in this tool looks like. Now, this is obviously not a full tutorial. This is just my first impressions. And so when I picked up the pen tool and started drawing, um, it was a little concerning for me just like how free this feels for uh, something that I want to be very precise. Now, I did realize that, you know, it does snap to different areas. So if if it snaps to green, you can know that you're on this green axis here. Uh, if it snaps and turns red, that you're on the red axis. And if it snaps and turns blue, then you're on the blue. Uh, so, you know, it's not the hardest thing in the world, but it just doesn't feel as exact as I maybe have want this to be. Uh, but if we again go ahead and just draw a quick box, making sure that it's flat on this green plane. And if I rotate my camera around, we can actually see that it's flat on the green plane. So that's good. Um, and then use my push pull tool to bring this up and just make it a 3D object. Um, so there we go. It's pretty simple to draw. So if you're looking to do uh, quicker things, which I think is intended in the name, of just like SketchUp, um, I don't know if this is a CAD program where you would actually want to use this for any tooling. Uh, but if you are just trying to get ideas out of your head and quickly draw something up, I do think this does uh, a little bit better of a job than something that's more robust like Fusion 360. So we've got our square here. We can go ahead and add some texture. So this one is concretes that we can add. Um, so again, these <laughs> images don't look uh, fantastic, but if you're just trying to quickly sketch something up and get a size and perspective and wanted to add, you know, some outside materials to this, uh, you can do roofing stone, you know, there's a, a good amount of options in here. But again, most of the stuff that I'm making is like within uh, an eight by eight inch um, size. So I don't think I'd be using asphalt for anything unless I wanted to like make this my background. But again, if we zoom in here, uh, this is a pretty pixelated picture. So it's not going to be like the most realistic representation uh, of what I'm going for. But you know, the more you zoom out, the better that will look. One other thing that I really enjoyed about this program uh, that I found clicking around is this 3D warehouse that they have. Um, this is basically just a huge library of all different types of, um, it's mostly like furniture and buildings and things like that because what I've uh, figured out is that this tool is mostly used for uh, like interior design and architecture and more large scales 3D modeling uh, than again, the kind of things that I'm doing. Now it's obviously, not uh, only meant for that as they do have some things that you can 3d print here um, some like personal protection stuff that's uh, relevant to the time that we're in right now um, so if we wanted to make face mask or uh, ventilators or filters for those ventilators or anything uh, they do have some files in here that you can export um, but for the most part this 3d warehouse is like chairs and pianos and uh, even smaller things around the house so if you wanted to build like a wardrobe you could put shoes and all these types of assets in there um, so not saying it's completely unusable for 3d modeling but i don't imagine 3d printing any of these assets that are built into uh, most of this warehouse but say we did find something in the kitchen area here 
uh, if we wanted to 3D print, uh, maybe a jar or something like that. Here, let's do a mug. Probably not something you'd want to uh, 3D print in PLA, which is what I'm currently using, but doesn't mean that we couldn't do it. Um, you know, you can see that the mug will be right here, uh, wherever you place it. And if I go ahead and delete out all these other assets real quick, just so I can show you that you can actually Oh boy, <laughs> that you can actually export this as uh, an STL file. So if I delete out everything else, then and zoom in up on my mug here, we can go to this menu up here in the top left side and go down to export and built right in, you can export as STL. So that is really simple. That's a really good thing to see. Uh, it even says right there, it's for 3D printing. Um, so they have thought about 3D printing a little bit, uh, but again, I don't know if this is the most robust tool for 3D printing. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that. Uh, you can see it just takes a second or two. So there's no problems there. I have actually opened it up in Cura uh, and see that the files come across, uh, you know, as clean as you would like. Uh, and especially if this is a model that you're making just quickly that you want to sketch up, um, you know, I think that is a good case use for this tool. So I know that wasn't a full comprehensive tutorial on how to use SketchUp. That's not what this video is aimed to be. Uh, it was just to show you my perspective as someone who's pretty new to 3D printing, looking for this type of software. Uh, is this something that I want to dive into? My uh, first instinct was not really. I didn't see too many things that were built uh, that would make my life easier. I think there are ways that I could get around, uh, you know, 3D modeling in the software. And if it was something that, uh, you know, my computer was holding me back and I needed something that was web-based and free, it would be something that I'd probably dig into a little bit more than Tinkercad, um, but as far as SketchUp versus uh, Fusion 360, which is the program that I've been using a lot more lately, um, I think Fusion 360 wins hands down. There's just a lot more usability, uh, and even the way the tool is built, it's more for 3D printing as far as like they actually have a slicer built into Fusion 360 now, so that's definitely the direction that they're thinking of going with that software. So again, if I'm wrong, please leave a comment down below. I am trying to learn through this process, but uh, that's why I said at the beginning maybe i'm not spending enough time with this tool but for me uh, i just didn't think it was worth putting in too much time for the 3d printing side of things uh, but you are welcome to leave those comments down below you're also welcomed and encouraged uh, to communicate with me down there if there's a project that you're working on where you think 3d printing could be helpful uh, like i said i'm new to this space i'm just trying to learn as much as possible and having ideas from the community i think would be a fun way to uh, push my skills and uh, help me understand how to collaborate with this platform a little bit more uh, so looking forward to that if you're interested in 3d printing or anything else that i have going on there will always be additional information in the description below but until the next video i'll see you guys around